Hi, everyone. I'm Brad Buell with Broadleaf Commerce. We're an enterprise e-commerce software company across multiple use cases, including unified commerce, marketplace, B2B, multi-site, and multiple industries, including retail, automotive, telco, finance, and manufacturing industrial. And I'm Rob Harbles with Artisan, and we're an Inc. 5000 digital innovation consultancy providing full-service technology strategy and solution services in the retail, hospitality, restaurant, finance, and supply chain industries. I first met Rob when he was CIO of The Buckle, a billion dollar retailer with stores across America. And we met at a conference like this one. Back then the hot term was omni-channel, but Rob was working almost a decade ago on a unified commerce approach before unified commerce was a thing. And now I get to partner with Rob and Artisan Studios to help other retailers realize unified commerce solutions. When I first met Brad, my team was stuck between buying solutions that didn't quite cut it or building everything ourselves. We had a capable team and leveraging Broadleaf allowed us to customize where we needed it with a faster time to market that worked with our legacy systems as well as scaling into the cloud. Today, we focus on helping others realize similar results. As partners, we've collaborated on a unified commerce report sharing the state of the retail industry, as well as an ebook on how to leverage composable commerce. And we're here today not to talk about composable technology, but as the subtitle states, a composable approach, or as Gartner calls it, composable thinking. Ask yourselves. How long would it take your team to release a feature or system once you've identified the problem or opportunity, such as buy online pickup in store, curbside, endless aisle, etc.? How many have simply been told no or later by your IT teams because they would need a lot of time to unravel all the dependencies on existing systems? Time to market matters, and short term needs can force rapid cycles and shortcuts over and over and you don't ever get to everything in your list. For the past 12 years, Chief Martech has been following this technology vendor landscape across a variety of categories, from e-commerce where broadly traditionally fits to others such as advertising and social technologies. In 2011, there were 150 technologies that they tracked across these categories, which has exploded to over 11,000 solutions this year, a list that's aggressively growing year over year. As we're showing, there's thousands of companies innovating, but you don't want to outsource your innovation. That's what differentiates you. You should be investing in what allows you to pivot quickly and drive straight towards your strategic goals. Now, we all know you can't just drop technology in place to solve problems. Investments are made future-proof by having organizational alignment from the entire business so that you can accelerate business results. Who here is familiar with the term shadow IT, where your business is using technology or systems without the IT group even knowing about it? Really, the question comes down to whether your organization supports your initiatives and innovations, or does your organization cause friction and push you to circumvent the obstacles? How do you actually manage innovation? How does your overall organization even prioritize innovation? How do you stay aligned culturally? Today, we're going to lay out three principles for organizations to enable innovation. And it starts with identifying what innovation looks like. The first principle for enabling innovation is realizing that your business is complex and you should embrace that complexity. Differentiate yourself. Understand selectively what makes you unique and fight for it. Otherwise, why do you exist? But just because something is complex doesn't mean it has to be avoided or removed. You need a repeatable strategy on how you can prioritize your innovation. Prior to Broadleaf, I was in management consulting. And for those that are familiar with management consulting, you know that we love frameworks. I was on a number of strategy projects where there were executives between different lines of business that would argue not about what to do, but how to do it. And the situation kept coming up enough that what became apparent was a need for what I started calling the strategy matrix that you see here, where if anything on the top left is truly core to your business, your unique selling points, generally you should look at producing that on your own. Um, sometimes you do that with a strategic partner. 
In the middle of the chart here, you see anything that's critical to your business, things that keep you up at night. You may want to either build or buy, but you, you most likely want a strategic partner. And then for anything that's truly commodity, as you see on the bottom right here, the, the recommendation generally is to just buy it off the shelf. Retailers don't have to be in the billion dollar club to afford adopting composable approaches. A great example of something you probably shouldn't be building as a retailer is payment systems. Unless it's a core differentiator for your brand identity, you simply aren't going to outpayment the competition. The typical consumer has muscle memory that the industry has ingrained in our shopping routines. As a retailer, when your consumer is ready to give you the money, the last thing you want to do is introduce homegrown frictions. Just take the money and chalk the win. Don't waste composable thinking on commodity problems. This framework was first introduced at a customer service company that was planning on building their own physical call center building, something that they certainly didn't need to spend their time and money on. Now, once you've embraced this complexity, the, the next typical question is, what should we compromise? But the second principle that we have for you in enabling innovation is to not compromise. The question starts to be, what's your true north? What vision do you have for your brand's relationship with your consumers? Because technology should be an accelerator and technology should become more invisible as you mature, not the other way around. A composable approach then makes it much easier to not have to compromise your vision. So imagine you want your store managers to work with one solution to manage all their inventory rather than logging into ERP, point of sale, inventory. Sometimes it's just better to change a technology to meet a differentiating business process rather than vice versa. In the tech world, Martin Fowler blogged about a composable approach being like a strangler fig tree. Rather than replacing the whole tree at once, branches grow out from the original base and eventually replace the original root. To accomplish our vision, we would create a new seamless interface that interacts and integrates with the other systems one at a time, unifying inventory across systems and eventually removing the need for the original interfaces. At Broadleaf, we've seen our clients practically do this by replacing feature sets over time. This past year, a multi-billion dollar multi-brand retailer started with replacing their offers and promos to add promotions that they were unable to merchandise with their legacy system. And then with the new revenue that they made from the migrated promo features, they were then able to fund other commerce platform migration efforts. Composable thinking and planning then not only removes the need to compromise, it also allows you to focus on what matters and where to innovate. The third principle in enabling innovation is focusing on pragmatism by innovating iteratively. When defining your strategic roadmap, just like Rob was talking about with the strangler fig pattern, plan on evolving your existing large systems and smaller iterative efforts and then introduce new features while you're migrating those legacy capabilities. You all likely heard that you can simply build microservices or refactor things to improve your business, but the IT team needs more time or to be left alone. The IT and business teams need to work together or you won't gain momentum. You need organizational alignment. Truly embrace an agile methodology within your entire business. We all know the old aphorism, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? What we try and do here is isolate specific problems to make them more digestible and then realize the returns on those smaller efforts in order to snowball into overall impacts. Recently, we accomplished a similar challenge with a multi-billion dollar quick serve restaurant chain. They had a limiting dependency on an old order management system. We were asked to reimagine their solution create services aligned with core features and replace dependencies on the legacy system month by month, feature by feature, iteratively. The client was then able to quickly realize full transparency, enabling advanced analytics and ultimately have better control of their supply chain. And if you're stuck, we can help you get unstuck. We've lived through this and we've helped organizations initiate and accelerate their innovation efforts 
Again, to summarize the three principles to enabling innovation that we have for you today, number one, embrace complexity. Know what differentiates you in market. Number two, don't compromise. Stay true to your vision. And number three, innovate iteratively because innovation is a process, not a project. But don't just take our word for it. Gartner has stated by this year, 2023, organizations that have adopted a composable approach will outpace competition by 80% in the speed of new feature development. Focus on what matters. The rest is noise. Thank you again for your time today. And if you'd like to learn more, please feel free to use the QR codes here to download the Composable Commerce ebook or the Speed of Change Unified Commerce Report that we have on broadleafcommerce.com and artisan-studios.com. Thank you.